then off the back of that off the flip side i was actually thinking to myself it's actually quite refreshing and it's actually been quite nice to not see so many celebrities and hollywood people and what law and influencers run and fall over themselves to try and explain the crisis that's happening in ukraine and russia to try and offer condolences or their opinions or hot takes it's quite refreshing not to see that no one's doing those imagined songs or filming black and white videos of them crying or you know doing whatever crazy posts where they're holding up a sign and painting themselves in the in the colors of the ukrainian flag that everyone's just kind of taking a chill pill and understand that maybe this is way above their level of intellect or whatnot or just care and level and they're just kind of doing what they do best and allowing people that actually can help that situation to help it because i think that's a big thing too i think for as much as i've seen people online especially some people that I follow on the high fashion twitter sort of space be like oh i can't really um enjoy the clothes or share all this beautiful stuff or take part in this fashion when i know what stuff is going over when i know so many people are in misery on the other side of the planet or you know basically in russia cool i get it i understand i get the sentiment but really just stick to talking about clothes right stick to sharing mood boards stick to you know sharing the highlights of shows that you liked or picking up designers or talking about someone's outfit at a flipping red carpet event that's what the world needs you for we don't need you to basically you know pretend to be caring or knowledgeable about what's going on in ukraine and russia because you don't and also you're not really going to add anything meaningful to our conversation whatsoever because there are people who legitimately live and breathe these sort of geopolitical um conflicts day to day and this is their kind of time to really bask in the glory of it where they can really offer up their expertise and you sticking your nose in isn't going to help things and talking about people who are not going to help things this is one of them lex friedman the hubris and the narcissism that you need to have in order to sit there and construct such a tweet is just out of this world because i was actually was thinking about lex friedman earlier i was thinking in general how conflicted it is to be a lex friedman fan because in general the guy is a flipping great interviewer one of the best his podcast is absolutely amazing the way that he cuts up the clips on his clips channel and makes them um makes them easily easy to digest and for the most part even if people i don't like i've always found or even people that i'm not interested in i've always found myself going to the clips checking out something they said and then going to watch the full episode which generally doesn't happen usually when you watch an episode of a show usually when you watch the clips you watch the clips because you don't want to watch the full episode you don't watch a clip of the of a show and then go watch the full but it happens so often with lex friedman i get great book recommendations great stuff about health supplements workouts like great shit really, really really cool love the guy i think he's i think sometimes the way he gargles joe rogan nuts is a bit off putting sitting there and writing a song about him or singing a song in front of joe rogan's face like it's super cringe i but i understand if you're that person you live in the states and joe rogan happens to be your friend that's essentially like being the friend with the president you know what i mean i get it it's a big deal that can be a bit cringe that i can put to one side but the thing that's always kind of puzzled me has been his weird blind spot that he seems to have with it Putin. Now, I get the power thing, I get the kind of in charge thing, but just the kind of complete, like, I won't say benevolence, but it's just the complete sort of oversight he seems to have with the fact that how most people view Putin isn't the way he views him. And for whatever reason, he has it in his head that the way he approaches life in terms of love and all this nonsense and I block you with love and all this gay shit that somehow that's legitimately going to save the world and now he posted this tweet off the back of what's happening in ukraine and russia or between ukraine and russia sharing his thoughts and opinions and how he's trying to basically help or add to the situation it's just baffling this legitimately come out of a grown-up's head and he sat there and thought this is a good thing to share with the world and he legitimately stands by it too it's just like are you insane are you nuts but it does make a lot of sense because to be I think to be a success at that sort of level, you kind of have to have this weird self important grandy like you know feelings of grandiose where you just legitimately feel like you're going to change the world with a podcast like that's that's the, that's the kind of person he feels like he is and i think some of those guys it's like the comedian guys right and the la comedy people they legitimately think stand-up comedy 
is way more important than what it actually is when really for the most part it's just a group for the majority of it there's some people that make a lot of money and some people that are worth caring about but for most of it it's most people just you know telling dick jokes in a flipping casino somewhere right in the middle of nowhere that no one gives a shit about or in some dive bar somewhere where half the people are just drunk off flipping chicken wings and shit do you know what i mean but they legitimately think these guys are like scholars they think they're flipping aristotle and whatnot when they get up on their stage and now that disease has somehow spread to podcasters um anyway he says the following here's his tweet lex freedom on twitter says as follows i stayed up all night talking to people in ukraine and russia we don't get it. i'll publish the mark zuckerberg podcast another to another day or another today he's got a, pub, a podcast coming with mark zuckerberg i guess it's going to be interesting if you're a fan it, it, lex is really hard to listen to with his voice and how he speaks how monotone it is just imagine an exchange of fake pleasantries and connection and insight and whatever between mark zuckerberg and flipping lex friedman that sounds like two ai bots from tesla flipping trying to talk to each other do you know what i mean but that would be interesting regardless who cares um he continues i'll travel to russia and ukraine i will speak to citizens and leaders including putin he legitimately thinks he's gonna like if he if he does it fair enough kudos to you but it's a legitimately thing you're going to be able to get in front of Putin in the middle of a flipping war and talk to him about love and what pull out your guitar and write a song about how you think he could change himself if he just listened to your podcast or if he just did 10 burpees and listened to flipping David Goggins audiobook like what it continues war is pain my words are useless I said my love is all I have i send my love we don't need your love we need your podcast your podcast is brilliant keep interviewing scientists and stuff and people who claim to be very smart and whatnot cool continue to do that people like myself who are dummies we can pretend to be smart by listening to smart people talk about smart things we can buy their books read them not read them post covers on flipping instagram and get the dopamine hit of letting people know that we're all so smart it's a cool it's a good little economy we're all kind of you know everyone wins in that space but when he starts to step into what talking to world leaders trying to shape the world trying to change the world via the medium of what a dark suit and a, you know what a black suit black tie and a white shirt you're definitely going to save the world with that one isn't it like what the hubris bro the narcissism is just wild but it makes sense just the other day i saw a clip of flipping brendan Shaw talking about how he thinks he's gonna take Joe Rogan's spot. Like, yeah, I'm the next Khan coming up when I take his spot. His spot. This guy legitimately thinks because Rogan left to go to Texas that there's now a spot free in like the comedy scene in LA that Brendan Schub is the one to step in and occupy it. He legitimately thinks people like him. Like Joe Rogan enough is, you know, Joe Rogan's already a bit of a weird one, even though I'm a fan of his, because I think his idea and how he's kind of views the world is a bit skewed because he is legitimately like at the apex of the mountain no one's ever going to say anything bad about him or about what he does who's in a position of prominence because they all want to get on that show because that shows a ticket to the flipping bank in it yeah you can basically build a whole entire career off the back of that look at what brendan Schaub did that's essentially what he did that friendship with joe is you know being a real godsend in that regard and, and even he has a very skewed way in how people kind of view him or his position in life and i don't know it's very skewed because he doesn't really get a lot of you would say dissenting voices coming his way apart from ari shafir when he's on the flipping podcast and some of these people you feel like they only spend time around intellectuals talking about how they can solve the world's issues with a podcast or a white sheet or an app or some sort of supplement they don't really speak to regular people normal people who just have to kind of go about their regular lives who are struggling to put a meal on the table who maybe eat mcdonald's twice a week or three times a week or five times a week you know who are really happy with their twenty six thousand pound a year you know customer service job because it allows them the freedom to do other things that they want to do people who are you know balancing an entire family off a twenty six thousand pound a year kind of salary job like people who go on holiday once every two years like they don't hang around with regular people so they have this very skewed warped way of looking at the world that they honestly legitimately think that all of their little conversations they have with people <coughs> are legitimately helping to kind of you know i don't know influence policy change nations and the shape of things to come and whatnot it's like what 
bruv, how long have you heard people on podcasts talk about UBI, universal base, universal basic income, with the exception of some places that have, you know, like the UK, where we have some sort of form of benefits, where has UBI really been implemented in a big way? That would make sense. Americans haven't even got free healthcare. And these motherfuckers really think sitting there on the podcast is actually going to change things. You want to change things, implement free healthcare, push for that in your flipping country. Focus on that one. Don't go and try and change the landscape of geopolitics and flipping places that you, you know, that you have no business being in in the first place. Places that you don't understand. Leaders that you clearly think are far more redeemable than the entirety of the world does. Everyone else looks at flipping Putin as the reincarnation of Hitler. Whereas Lex Friedman looks at him as if like he's a project, like I can fix him. Like that kind of gay, um, you know, hot boy sort of meme that people do. Oh, I can fix him. That's what he sort of looks at. That's what he looks at him like. Yeah, let me just sit him down, make him watch a couple of motivational videos, a bit of Gary Vee, a bit of David Goggins, a bit of Joe Rogan, and then suddenly he's going to change his way. He's going to listen to Jordan Peterson. He's going to get his room in order. And then he won't, you know, think about sending helicopters and paratroopers into flipping Odessa and flipping bombing buildings and stuff like that. that. Let's just do that. That's going to change things. Like what? Are you insane? Are you legitimately insane in the membrane? And I don't understand these people. Like, why can't you just be good at what you do and focus on that? Instead of talking about this nonsense, so instead of talking this nonsense about stuff that you don't understand, especially this perspective, why couldn't he just put out a podcast talking about his experience growing up in Russia and how difficult it's been and the struggles and the conflicts that's gone from Ukraine and things he's heard about from his dad? Da, 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 da. That'd be a great thing to learn about because he's a Russian dude. That makes sense. Connections over there. I'm sure he has family over there, friends over there. Cool. Or just put out the Mark Zuckerberg podcast so people can distract themselves from all the horrors that are going on over there for a bit. I don't know. Maybe just focus on your flipping job. You know, maybe, maybe just stick to what you're good at. Maybe, maybe. But then again, maybe he legitimately thinks he's so good that he can take the Lex Freeman podcast into, into the flipping, into the walls of the Kremlin. And this is somehow going to change me. And these guys are legitimately nuts. It's as nuts as those people who say fashion or design can save the world. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. People are still pillaging, raiding, murdering and raping. It doesn't matter because you design a really nice chair. No one cares about your really nice chair. No one cares about a really nice jacket that you made. No one cares about the cut of your trousers. No one cares. The world keeps turning. People have real lives, real struggles they're going through. They're not going to be saved for a podcast especially not flipping Vladimir Putin. Like what? Oh yeah, yeah. I know this guy doesn't get the best sort of shine in the West. You know, they paint him out to be a villain and to be a bit of a Bond villain in that regard. Yeah, cool. But if you read enough books, if you watch enough documentaries and you do enough research, you will come to the conclusion that it's most likely right and true what they say about him. Vladimir Putin isn't a redeemable character for the most part. You know, Ukraine, Russia is a totalitarian um, government for the most part. You can't exactly stand up and oppose his point of view, even if you're a political opponent. What happened to that Al Al Alexei, whatever his name is? He's still in prison, right? Yes, he might be an undercover CIA agent or more, whatever. Whatever people think about what, he, what his actual true motives are. But a political opponent has been in prison for how long now? How long now? Because he what? He says some mean things about Putin. They now he's been chucked into prison for an ungodly for an ungodly time until his trial awaits. And then from there, what happens to his trial? Is he get let out? Probably not. And this is the person you want to sit down with and heal with love through the power of a flipping Sennheiser microphone. Ah, oh, do me a favor, man. These people are absolutely disturbed in the brain, legitimately disturbed. And then the thing is, they'll come back and say to people who dissent or push back to them, "Oh, you're haters." No, we're not. We're not haters. Your cultural voices. You people that people we people listen to your conversations. We consume your content. We sometimes buy the stuff that you make. We have a right to also say some things share our opinion on what you do. The same way you share your opinion of what other people do on a continuous basis. But then they look at it and say, Oh, that's hating. It's like what? How does that make any sense? I don't know. But regardless, Lex Freedom is an absolute dork. Like a dork with a capital D. Like, I'm gonna heal him with love. Sod off.